Welcome back. I'm Michael. You are listening to The Michael Dresser Show. Chad Vanderveen with us. He's the editor of a new website and a magazine called Future Structure. And you can find him at www.futurestructure.com. It's a new framework for thinking through and solving the challenges faced in building economically and socially robust communities. Chad, hi. Welcome to the show. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. Oh, and thanks for being here. You know, your window of opportunity for uh, bringing some of this to the public is like right here and right now. There's such confusion out there about what an economy is and also how to build communities. And I would venture to guess that most people don't have a roadmap. So you get somebody who's got, who, forget left or right for pol- politics, doesn't matter. You get somebody who is ideologically bent, and if something sounds good, we jump on it. And that's not going to do us any good, is it? Right. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that uh, about the roadmap. And that's really what we're, we're trying to do. You read that uh, little intro about what future structure is. Yes. Solving the challenges faced. And, but what does that, you know, what does that really mean? Um, and what we really think of when we talk about that is we want future structure to be an effort to really help city and regional, regional leaders understand that Cities aren't these collections of independent silos, but in reality are, are large-scale, really interconnected systems, and that everything in a city and in a region is connected. But what we want to talk about is how those things are connected or how they can be. So city leaders can make more intelligent decisions and, and in, in service of creating communities that are really better for the people who live in them. Well, no, absolutely, because when you really come down to it, uh, let's say you and I uh, live in a community, you own a store. So I go into that store and I spend $15. That $15 is going to recirculate eight, ten times in that community. And that is a bonding process. Most people don't realize that you walk into a store and you pay for something. doesn't mean it stops there. That's just the birth right. of it and it moves through. Right, yeah. You know, I like to think of it as more, I, when I think about future structure, it's like the human body in a way. Because in your body you have a, an energy system and a water system and a waste removal system and a transportation system and even this sort of existing infrastructure, if you will. Sure. And, you know, some of our infrastructures need more improvement than others, but all of these systems are really in service of support of you. And if you only think about one of those, like your energy, then the rest are going to suffer. But if you think of your body as a system, you can make better decisions for yourself. Sure. And now with technologies like wearable technology, Google Glass and those sort of things, Internet of Things, when you layer that on top, you can really open up a whole host of new possibilities. And it's really the same with a city. We want government to think like systems engineers, if you will, and um, yeah. really to make you know make that better. Sure, it makes a lot of sense. And if somebody doesn't believe that that makes sense, uh, I give you Detroit. Detroit didn't, everything that you're saying, they didn't do. And look what happened to them. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we want to avoid and get that roadmap in place. So as, you know, the, uh, the infrastructure investment needed in this country is pretty astounding. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think about just the water infrastructure alone, the American Society of Civil Engineers estimates one, or $195 billion is going to be needed to invest it, be invested by 2040 just in water infrastructure. Sure. But, but and- then on the other side... Oh, yeah. It's going to say very quickly, but sure, you, you got you know $120 billion, but is that $120 billion going to go to the most effective place that it possibly can to create and, and, allow, it to, uh, and allow it to function? Well, that's a good question, and that's a lot where we want to see that technology overlaid into these systems because when you have, you, you hear the term smart whatever a lot, yeah. smart buildings, smart infrastructure, smart cars. But when those things are actually smart, they're producing all kinds of data. And um, Cisco says by 2020, there will be 50 billion connected devices. You know, when all of our things are sharing and producing data, there's a lot of information to parse through, but it also really helps you make more intelligent decisions. And that's where things like data analytics and big data, you hear a lot of those IT terms come in, but it really helps you make sense of a lot of those things. Yeah, but see, the average person has no concept of of what an infrastructure is, you know the, the you know we we live in a world today now, especially today, where 
you know, we spend X amount of dollars on, on everything but what, is, what needs to be done. And, and if you can hold off on the in infrastructure and if you can make sure that there's breaks in the structure and you make sure that somebody gets dependent, then all of a sudden you've got an ideology that stops what it is that you're presenting. And I think that in and of itself is a problem. Right, it's kind of like the uh, the leaky pipe behind the wall, right? You don't think about it until it actually breaks, and then sure. there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so we try to whittle it down in a way to for five elements in, in water, waste, energy, transportation, and that built environment idea to give people an idea of what we're talking about when we mean infrastructure. Yeah, but see, you're also talking about, and this is coming from your press release, which I think is important, Regulations like an education, laws, uh, policies, human capital, research. I mean, that, that's a long list. So it's not just the mechanics of, uh, of, uh, of equipment. It's the mechanics of life itself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's these three tenants we use. I think they're in that press release. And you mentioned a lot of them under what we call soft infrastructure, which is those intangible things mm -hmm. like ideas, laws, regulations, education, things that or where the genesis of a lot of this begins. You couple that with the actual infrastructure we're talking about, the hard infrastructure, roads, water, utility systems, and then layer on a technology layer of increasingly sophisticated sensors and connected devices. Then you have a place where you can start, where you look at all three of those things, and you take people from different disciplines and bring them to the table, whereas maybe they've never had any conversations with, with each other before. Sure. But you, but you bring them to the table values neutral, and you're there to construct. You're there to put it in for, for an end result. And you get the coulda, woulda, shouldas, and the rights and wrongs, and you throw them completely out. That, in essence, would be the magic to the beginning of starting a program like this. But th we don't have that. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do through telling, telling the stories that are out there. And it's really exciting for me being an editor of this, there's so many stories to tell on this. And as someone who really loves and enjoys writing, I, I'm looking forward to being able to tell a lot of these amazing stories that are going on or will be going on soon. And then, but you're right. It, 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 if you look, for example, over at uh, the city of Charlotte, um, the mayor there, well, former mayor, Anthony Fox, who, as you know, is secretary of the U.S. Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. But back when he was mayor, he started something called Envision Charlotte, which he partnered with the Clinton Global Initiative on. But what they, what they do there is they bring the environmentalists and the pro-business groups together, two groups that are typically not of the same mind, but with the idea of that if they work together, they can really reduce the city's energy consumption and at the same time cutting operating costs. Sure. And uh, go they have a goal of a 20% energy reduction in five years. They've got a bunch of people on board, a bunch of big companies, utilities, and then a lot over 60 buildings in uptown Charlotte are participating. Now, by the way, how do you really keep something like that going? You, you know, you, you start it going, you, you, you build in it, but what are some of the practical applications? How do you, how do you get a, and, and what anybody would need would be a uh, non-judgmental oversight committee, which is an oxymoron because they've got a judge, but you've got to have somebody <laughs> coming in with, with a with eyes on just getting the job done? Well, in this case, you're able to do that in a way by uh, shifting that responsibility over to technology in this case. What they do there is in, uh, in all those buildings that are participating in the program, they have electronic dashboards and these little kiosks they've set up. And that you can also access this online, but it shows in real time what the, city's, what that, what the energy usage is really like and what, what systems are in place to, to reduce some of that. So, so it's a visual sort of oversight committee that's done digitally in real time. Sure. Okay. But when that is values neutral, quote unquote, it's digital. But somebody's got to set the program up. Somebody's got to be there yeah. to create it and then press the button. I think there's where the problem is. Do, do you think we will ever see clear enough politics? And again, I'm not going left or right on this. Do you think we'll ever see clear enough politics to be able to, to, to put our foot on the path of having this done or just the beginning? I think so if we start locally, which is where we're keeping our focus. Um, it, you know, it, in my assessment, I think it's probably most people's assessment, the, the left and right 
politics of Washington are, are lessened the closer you get to the issue at, 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 at the local level. Yeah. Obviously, there are still partisan issues there, but starting locally in the cities by getting your city leaders, your community leaders, your business leaders together there and building outward, building, building bottom up instead of top down, I think is the way you go about avoiding some of those things you were talking about. And, and by the way, I think if we, if we okay this can, the Canadian pipeline, I believe very strongly to make it successful, they've got to implement something that, like what you're talking about here, that controlled infrastructure, you know, where, where it's going to go A, B, C, D, and they're going to stick to it, and they're going to stay loyal to the, uh, uh, to the focus. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think there's any other way you can be successful doing something like that with, without a system like that in place. And, but, you know, in the end, it does come down to the fact that it's, it's human beings still in charge of these systems until we are completely automated. We are going to be dependent on, on the whims of the people we put in charge. Sure. So, but I, I think you're right. No, no question about it. Now, do you see the, uh, not only the website growing, but do you see the magazine growing? Do you see more and more people starting to become aware of what's in there and the, the values, the, the perks, quote unquote, that we could have if we do what you're saying to do? Well, I hope so, and that's part of what I'm trying to do is, you know, foster awareness of obviously a future structure itself, and and but more importantly, the vision of what we're trying to accomplish in that, you know, understanding how cities are connected, and using that understanding to create those better communities. Yeah. But it, it, it's about telling stories that are out there. We're, we have a couple of summits coming up this year uh, on the East Coast and West Coast, and uh, but it's a, it's really a brand new platform. It's it's less than a year old. Um, so there, it's an, it's an exciting topic, though, and there's just there's so much to talk about. I'm really in a fortunate in a fortunate spot to be able to be here to tell tell some amazing stories, and I could give you a ton of examples, but I know we don't have too much time. Yeah, we're no, we're 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 getting close now. Let me ask you this: when when you really come down to it, the uh, uh, the magazine as it spreads, as more and more people realize what's going on, what's the next step? Because you got to go beyond just writing stories. Right. And that's where the, the summits were operating come into play. And that's actually the, you know, the physical act of getting the, all those different uh, stakeholders, if you will, that we've been talking about to that proverbial table to come together and have the discussions about how do we start to do some of this stuff together. We, you know, we being one of the groups, they can't do it on their own. We need these different partners, and we need to have an actual conversation about how do we find a common goal and uh, get some of these programs underway. Yeah, and by the, uh, the staff that you have, where, the, where does the staff come from? I mean, what kind, when I say, <laughs> I don't mean a city, but what, what kind of a mindset? Where, where do you bring your staff in from? Well, Future Structure is under the corporate umbrella of a company called eRepublic, which publishes magazines you may have heard of called Governing and Government Technology and Emergency Management. And all of those do focus on state and local government from a policy perspective, an IT perspective, and from a, a public safety perspective. So that's, w that's where our existing expertise is, and that's where we're building out from. So we have a really good uh, foothold in the state and local market already. So this is almost a natural extension of what those uh, other publications have already accomplished, really building on what they've established so far. Wonderful. Chad, do you have uh, the website again so we can find you? We're just about running out of time. Website is futurestructure.com, and we can be followed on Twitter at futurestruck, like lovestruck. Um, so futurestructure.com and Twitter at futurestruck. Wonderful. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Michael. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Good luck.